Home is a pretty vague concept. To some, it's a physical place, and to others, it's someone or something. We were all children at one point in our lives. And that's when we learned the most valuable lessons about ourselves and humanity as a whole. Good morning and welcome to... Podcast. 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 Home can be a happy place or an angry place or not a place at all. Your home will be whatever you decide it is. So let's just get right into it. For the most part, home is a good, hunky-dory place. Full of fun and... Funny story. When I was in my younger years, probably around kindergarten or first grade, I had a lot of kids that were my age that lived on my street. I was able to play a lot with these friends, and when we were together, we had many great experiences and adventures. One of these times, we went over to a school that was right outside of our neighborhood. It was a Montessori school, and since that was different to us, I guess we thought it was cool to sneak into the playground after school hours and play there. Me and my friends, Jacob and Frank, were walking back to our houses from a time that we were playing over at the school, and we saw this other house that was right outside of the neighborhood limits. We felt intrigued by this house and decided to check it out. We were walking towards this strange house when we heard a dog bark from the fenced in backyard. It was a dog. We had to look at the dog. Upon peeking over the fence, we found two pretty good sized dogs. Jacob wanted to check out the dogs, and we didn't have any objections to that. So determined, we went. He opened the fence to get to the animals, and both the dogs bolted out of the yard into the woods. We stood in shock as we realized that the dogs were gone because of us. I remember my thinking that my life was over. We were responsible for this, and now the world was crashing down as the situation fell apart. We were going to be in so much trouble. We all got up and tried to find the dogs, but they were gone. We ran through the woods and found nothing. The dogs must have come back because we didn't see any lost dog posters, and I can kind of remember the dogs not truly being gone, but I can't remember for sure. Me and Frank definitely did not feel very much guilt, however, and we made fun of Jacob for being the one that opened the gate. We cheerfully sang things like, Who let the dogs out? Jacob did. Jacob did. To me, that ability to forget about the things that are happening and to be able to keep living and making jokes is one of the essential elements to this idea of home. To be able to live and keep living be, instead of being stuck on the same thing forever because you're around people that you can laugh with and make fun of the situation really makes what home is. Home is being around these people, and they are what makes it. Wow, deep thoughts. Yeah, childhood is ignorance and bliss. That sounds fun. What impact did that have on you? It just really led me to think more about my actions and what I do now. So who let the dogs out? Jacob did. He should go to jail. Home doesn't always have to be a location. Home doesn't always stay the same. Personally, I've never moved outside of Arkansas, but sometimes I wish I had because that would make my life a lot more interesting. I used to live in Texas, actually. Oh, really? That's cool. I moved from Louisiana around the first grade. Oh, and where did you move to? Take a guess, genius. Throughout my life, home has had many meanings. It has always been a place for me to feel comfortable and welcome. It was always the same, and I never had to worry about losing my home. I had a silly notion that my feelings about home would always be the same. Nothing would ever change. But my world flipped upside down in first grade when I moved from Alexandria, Louisiana to Bentonville, Arkansas. It was a sporadic decision, or at least it definitely felt that way. My parents had talked about possibly moving before, but it always seemed like a dream. The seven-year-old me, the only logical explanation was that my parents were ruining my life. I thought that my home was the best it could be and that no amount of change would make it even the slightest bit better. I had no idea what this was going to be like, and the unknown can be very scary. It didn't help that everything happened so fast. One day I was in Alexandria, the next we were moving, and I thought the world was ending. My parents had settled on a house that I hadn't seen, and I knew I wasn't going to like it. We moved in the summer of 2010. Our house was very nice, but I conveniently ignored the fact because it was simply impossible. We looked around at schools, and suddenly I had the worst realization of all. I would have no friends. This was yet another weight that came crashing down on me. How could this be any worse? But the truth was, 
that it probably couldn't have been any better. There are amazing people, new facilities, and much, much more. But I looked past all of this. Everything was weird, and even my own house was different. Finally, school started, and social death was imminent. But then I walked in as just another kid. I was an outsider, and no one treated me differently, and I quickly began to make friends. It still wasn't the same, but at least I was accepting reality. Then I started to realize that I was wrong all along. I didn't lose my home. I lost a house. But home doesn't have to be a location. Home can be an idea. It can be your family. It can be the ones you love. It's believing that you're where you're supposed to be and knowing why you're there. For me, home just happens to be in Bentonville. Without it, my life would be so different. I mean, these days, I can't think of anywhere better to call home. And did this change you at all? It definitely took a while, but I think this really helped me develop into a better person. How long did it take you to make friends here? And do you like it better here? Friends? It was definitely better here. There's so much more opportunity and everything else. So you can move around and still have a home. Do you think your home is in Louisiana or here in Bentonville? My home's definitely in Bentonville these days. I can't really see it anywhere else. Okay, okay, okay. All fun aside, home isn't always a good place. We aren't saying all homes are abusive or whatever, but everyone has some negative memories about home when things may have gotten a little bit out of hand. Oh, believe me, I have some very interesting home memories where things definitely got out of control. Noah, should we be concerned? No, it's nothing that bad. Just sometimes my temper got the best of me. Care to elaborate? <laughs> Do, 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 do. Oh, Alfie! <laughs> I like to think I'm a pretty relaxed person. I'm pretty laid back and I don't get upset about stupid things. But it took me a while to learn to control my anger. When I was about seven, I was a very short-tempered child. My siblings would make me angry and boy would I go off. There were numerous occasions where things probably went too far. The time I threw a plastic Indian at my brother and he had to wear an eye patch for a week. And the time I pushed my little sister down the stairs. I'm sure they deserved it, but how I handled the situation was all wrong. But the cherry on top of all those disasters was the time I ruined our garage door. My brother has always been a dweeb. He'd call me names. You know, the elementary school names. But our epic arguments probably went something like this. Can I be player one on the Wii this time? No, you're stupid. Am not. Are too. No, you are. Am not. I'm telling mom. Along with this banter, he would hog the TV and take the last cookie that was supposed to be mine. Which doesn't seem like a big deal, but I assure you, at the time, it was most definitely a big deal. But the time he was the most dweebish was one sunny afternoon in a cozy suburban neighborhood when he hit me with a skateboard and probably yelled an insult that hurt my second grade feelings and lit the fuse that was my temper. He was faster than I was and when he saw how angry I was, he booked it through our garage door and into the house. I followed, of course, but when I reached the door, he had locked it. Now this wasn't a very smart move on his part because now I didn't care what punishment was to follow. I just wanted sweet sweet vengeance. I took hold of my weapon, a small tennis racket, and begun my, began my rampage upon our poor garage door. Swing after swing, my rage only grew until I was finally satisfied. He still didn't unlock the door, and I don't remember how long I sat there, wallowing my own self-pity before I was let inside. I remember the look of sheer disappointment on my mom's face when she saw the damage that I had done, and I remember feeling so guilty even though moments before I had felt no remorse for my actions. The garage door, the tennis racket, and my own ego suffered tremendous damage. The garage door remained dented until we left the house, and the tennis racket has a flat side that makes it look all funny. And my ego, well, it's never been quite the same. And even though this memory and many others were not the greatest and best of home memories, they taught me lessons about my family and myself. Even though home isn't always the best place, it's always somewhere you can go back to and be welcomed. Okay, you don't seem like the aggressive type, but alright. Maybe I should just leave. No, 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 I promise I'm a lot calmer now. What did you say, Kylo Ren? <laughs> Get it? Because he's angry. I'm never going to live this down, am I? Nope. Sorry, bro.
<laughs> yeah, we can't just drop this. I mean, you tried to break into your own house in order to get revenge on your brother. It's not just something we can, you know, forget. Well, that was fun. Agreed. Home is a pretty big place, and I hope we taught you something about it. I was an accomplice to let the dogs out, and I left my home for good. And I tried to beat my brother to a pulp with a tennis racket. Thanks for listening to... Podcast. 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 See you next time on... Podcast. 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 And don't forget to subscribe to Podcast Podcast Podcast